tens of thousands of American families, the holidays are not the same as five years ago. They are families of men and women wounded in Iraq and Afghanistan. For many, when the war ended for their sons, their daughters, husbands, and wives, it only began again when they came home. Families have learned it's up to them to help support the former warriors and to wrestle with the system to get the benefits their loved ones deserve. Channel 8's Byron Harris reports. Jeffrey Taggart fought in Iraq. Now his parents are fighting the aftermath in their home. It's totally, totally wrong. I feel like that it's time some people woke up and realized what's going on with the way vets are being treated today. Jeffrey's wounds are physical and financial, a traumatic brain injury, a stroke, the consuming terror of post-traumatic stress disorder, and just trying to get by. I don't think society on it honestly has a clue. Um, they, they worry more about uh, saving the, the banks and the big three unions than uh, saving the soldiers that uh, are suffering right now. Jeffrey was a medic in Iraq. His task, caring for his comrades torn apart by mortars, firefights, and roadside bombs. It was a roadside bomb that blew him from the hatch of his armored personnel carrier. And VA doctors say that caused the traumatic brain injury and stroke that followed. But although the VA has diagnosed the injuries, it won't compensate him for them. It's been a living hell. It's, it's very difficult. The first time that I walked into uh, an ICU, room and saw one of my former medics uh, as a double amputee with an open head injury and um, I went weak in the knees and passed out. Like 30 percent of all combat vets, Jeffrey suffers from PTSD, survivor's guilt, a fear of people that can make a holiday trip to the mall a torment. Even sleep is no relief. Most of the time, I'm, I'm afraid to go to sleep. At age 29, Jeffrey lives in a room in his parents' house. He's had one job for three months since he was discharged two years ago. Prominent in his room is what he calls his wall of shame. 16 drugs he takes to stabilize his medical condition and his mood. In 36 months, the VA will no longer pay for the medications, which is why this file is so important. It's his appeal of his medical rating to the VA. The VA says Taggart has to prove he got his brain injury and his stroke in combat. A clue, his mom says, of a system out of kilter. If this is happening to him and I'm reading this kind of crap coming in the mail, then I know that there are many, many others. And it's just time that somebody started speaking up. The Government Accountability Office says there are 392,000 appeals awaiting decisions. In 2006, the average appeal took 657 days. Jeffrey Taggart's been waiting 730. It's just kind of a living hell. Byron Harris, Channel 8 News.